Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 19 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are going to learn Fusion 360 or you're going to die trying. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And today's lesson is going to be about parametric design concepts. And my friend, this very well could be the most important video in, in this entire Fusion 360 class because parametric design concepts are the design methodologies which separate the professionals from the home hackers. And don't worry, I'm going to take you through it step by step. And by the end of this class, I think that you'll be an expert. Now, let me talk, t tell you a little bit about why parametric design is so important. When I was working in the industry, I always noticed that there were two different types of mechanical designers. One group of mechanical designers is you're going through a project and needing a design edited or modified. They were always really easy to work with. You could tell them the changes, they would go away. Half an hour later, they would come back with the new model with your edits incorporated. The other group were very hard to work with. They were very obstinate and they would always argue against anything being edited. Oh, no, no, you can't do it that way. It needs to be this way and just so, so hard to work with. Now, what was the difference between designers that were very easy to work with and designers that were very hard to work with? The easy to work with designers used parametric design methods and the group that was hard to work with did not use parametric design methods. And the thing is, this is how it works. As your designs start getting more and more complicated, if you're just doing your designs by drawing something, putting a dimension, drawing something, putting in dimension, drawing something, putting in dimension, as you're doing that, what happens is you end up with a model that is very, very hard to edit. And if you edit this feature on this component over here, it breaks something over here. So you edit this, then you've got to come over here and edit and come over here and edit. And it's just like you're chasing this rabbit around your design, trying to get something that will actually fit together to where if you use good parametric design principles in your designs, your designs are very easy to edit. And when you edit them, they don't break. Okay, so that's what I'm going to show you today. You guys that took my visual Python class, you're probably already familiar with the concept. If you didn't take that class, don't worry, I will take you through it step by step. But enough of this introductory chit chat, it is time for us to jump in and get started here. So I'm going to move out of your way. Hey, we got a fishing boat. I always just love watching the fishing boats go by. I don't know if you guys love the fishermen as much as I do. But I love as I work here to just watch the guys out there fishing. But we will have to move off of the river cam and come over here. And what I will need you to do is fire up. I need you to fire up your most excellent Fusion 360. And the way I'm going to teach you parametric design is I'm going to do things two ways. First of all, I'm going to design a simple something without using parametric design principles. Then I'm going to show you where the problems occur, and then I'll come back and then I will show you how to do it with parametric design principles. Does that sound good? Okay, I hope it does. So let's come in and what I am going to do is going to get a few things arranged here. I'm going to come up and I am going to create, I will create a new sketch. We will be sketching on the most excellent red green plane, which is the XY plane. Let me get that at a good point for you to view. And we are going to design a very simple 
mechanical element. It's going to be a square base with a peg coming out of it, and then another square base with a hole, and then if you put the square base with the hole over the peg, you end up with a cube. Okay, sounds pretty good, doesn't it? So we will come over here, and I will start with a circle. So I will click on the circle. I will come here. I will hover over the origin, click, drag, and I will make that 25 millimeters enter very good we will be watching to make sure that we stay fully constrained now i'm going to get a rectangle and i'm going to say over here that i want that rectangle to be a center point rectangle so i hover over the origin i click i drag and now i want that to be 50 okay and then i want to tab over to the other dimension make that 50 and i have myself a nice little sketch it is fully constrained and so i will come over here i will finish the sketch i will get the home view and then what i'm going to do is i am going to extrude this so i will say extrude i will click the circle and i am going to extrude that 50 like that click enter turn my sketch off i will turn my sketch back on then i will click on the rectangle and i am going to extrude 25 man we are moving right along here uh, 25 enter and there i've got my pin i've got my base okay now we want to create that other element which is the base with the hole in it so i will come here and i will say create create a new sketch Where'd that go? Create a sketch. Oh, it's asking me for which plane. And so I'm going to, just to be safe, turn that body off. And again, the XY plane, there we are. And it's showing me that first sketch, even though I'm editing the second sketch, but that kind of makes it nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by coming over here with a construction line. I will make it a construction line and I am going to come over. I think I will come over 75 like that. Enter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of recreate this. So I will create a circle and I do not want a construction circle. So I will turn that off. Uh, hover over that construction line come out and i am going to make this 25 i'm going to ignore tolerances for the sake of speed so 25 and now i'm going to create another rectangle center point rectangle i will come here and then that is going to be 50 and then tab 50 enter that looks good fully constrained both sketches finish sketch home view I'll turn that body back on so we can see it. thought I would turn the body back on. Okay, there it is. And now I'll do a similar thing here, but here I'm just going to take this and I am going to extrude it 50. I'm sorry, I misspoke 25 like that. How's that look? Okay, that really looks pretty good. So you can see that my model is done. <clears throat> My model is done, and if I fabricated this and put this element up here, they would stick together and I would have a cube. The two bases would make a cube. 50 by 50. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, so what is wrong with that? Well, imagine that it was something like this, but even a lot more complicated. And now let's say that I wanted to change a dimension. And so let's say that I would come back and I would go to this first sketch. And let's say that I would say edit sketch. And then I'm going to come here. And on this radius, I'm going to make this 35 instead of 25. Okay, and now I'm going to come back and I'm going to look at my home view and I'm going to look at those bodies. What happened <clears throat> when I changed that dimension on that first sketch? I what? I broke my model. I broke my model because now this pin doesn't fit in this hole. So now I have to start chasing that error through my design. And now I've got to remember, was, was this one based on sketch one or was this one based on sketch two? And then where was it and what was it? And so then I would have to come over here and change this dimension in order to make it match that dimension. Or imagine that if I changed, uh, if I changed uh, the size of the rectangle, then I would have to come over 
here and ch change the size of this rectangle. So here is where we get into the concept of parametric uh, the concept of parametric design principles. And that is you don't design with dimensions. You design with parameters. And very importantly, when you define your parametric table, you define right relationships between related dimensions. Right relationships between related dimensions. And so doing, doing good parametric design, uh, doing good parametric designs is a lot more than just creating a table and using variables where you would have been using constants before. It's a lot more than that. It's about thinking about your design. And so what's one of the things that you would think about? This whole always needs to be the si same size as this pin. So now understand we're ignoring tolerances here. We're just assuming a perfect world where they would be the same size. And of course you can use parametric designs to take into account tolerances. But what you would see is this hole should be the same dimension as this pin. So should that be two parameters or should it be one parameter? The answer is it should be one parameter. Similarly, this width of this base, you always want it to match the width of this space. So would that be one parameter or two parameters? That would be one parameter. So what you want to do when you're doing parametric design is you want to have the minimum number of parameters that you can and no less. <laughs> you want to have the minimum number but no less. Now what do I mean by no less? Well on this I know <clears throat> that I would always want the width and the length, the width and the length to be the same. So that would be one parameter. But I have to think now would there ever be a case in the future where I might want a rectangular base and not a square base? And I think that would just never happen. So I would use one parameter. So as you're defining these parameters, you've got to really be thinking through the whole thing. So let's come in and let me do another design. Okay, let me do another design where I use parameters. And so what I am going to do is I am just going to kill this design. I'm not going to save it. And then I'm going to come in. I'm going to start a fresh new design. And this time I am going to create. But before I create, I am going to, let's see if it's there. Yes, it is there. I'm going to create my parameter table. And so I come over here under modify. I come down to change parameters. Now, what do I know? Really at its very core, what I am going to want is I'm going to want the base width, the base length, and the base height. Okay, the base width, the base length, the base height. And then what am I going to want? I am going to want the pin height. All right, and with that then, I should be able to design this whole thing. So you see I've got my parameter table here. You see that it has user parameters where it has user parameters. What I'm going to do is come over to the plus sign and I am going to click that and that creates a, a, a box for me to define a new parameter. So what I'm going to call this is base uppercase length and then I'm going to make that length was 50, right? So I'll say OK. And now I'm going to create another parameter. And I said uh, I said that those were going to, the length and the width would be the same. So I'm just going to call it base length and I will use that in both cases. I don't like that. Uh, I'm going to call that base to make it, you know, base, base side like that, base side. So that, that is the side of the base. So I'm going to call it, and I like to write these down as I'm doing them. So base side is going to be the length of the side and that is 50. Click enter and I am good. Now what did we also have? We had the base height. So I'll put base H and that is going to be 25. And I'm going to write that down. 
The one thing I don't like is you can't leave this parameter dialog box open as you design. And so that's why I like to sketch down, sketch out what my dimensions are. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create another one, which is going to be pin R for pin radius. And that was going to be 25. And so I will say, OK, I will sketch that down like that. OK, so I think I now need my pin height. <clears throat> so I will come over here, make another one, and I will call it pin H. And that is going to be 50. All right, so now let's come in and let's design using our parameters. The other thing I like about parametric design, do you see how it sort of forced me to think about my design before I jumped in and started drawing it out? <clears throat> okay, so now what I do is I'm going to create a sketch <clears throat> in the XY plane, and then I will come over here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a circle, I hover over the origin, I click, I drag, and then I'm going to call this 50, or I'm going to call this 25, right? No, I'm not going to call it 25, I'm going to call it what? P-I-N-R. And what I'm doing is I am typing in the parameter. And if you see, it actually kind of guesses the one that it might be. And you can select it once you type a few letters. And I'm just going to go ahead and select, select pin R and then enter and boom, I've got that. Now I'm going to come in. I'm going to get my rectangle. I want a center point rectangle here and I'm going to click drag. And then what do I want here? I want this base base what i'm going to select base side boom and now i'm going to tab over to the other dimension box and that is going to be base side as well okay and so there i've got that designed i'm going to finish the sketch i'm going to come here and then i'm going to do my extrusions so this i'm going to select i am going to extrude and i make that 50 right no, I don't make that 50. I make it pin what? Height, like that. Boom. Now I'm going to select this. Ah, what happened there? Stop that. Let's try that again. I select here. I say extrude. And then I'm going to extrude that pin height, like that. Enter, enter. It's done turned my sketch off, but I will turn my sketch back on. And then I click this, I extrude, and now this is what? Base H for base height, boom, okay. Now, enter, and so I have that design. Now we can do really quickly the other one by coming in and saying create a sketch, and I'm doing it on two sketches just so you can kind of see it. And I need to turn that body off disappear you aggravating thing okay I go there and now it's showing me the first sketch but I'm actually editing the second sketch and so I can see that I need another parameter an offset parameter like how far I want to scoot over here so I'm going to go back to my parametric table and I'm going to create a new parameter which is just going to be D off D off for the distance offset and I'll make note of that and then I will make that, let's say 75 millimeters, okay, and then okay. And now I'm gonna create a construction line. It will be a construction line. Click, come out here. How far do I wanna click? How far do I wanna come over? D off, boom, boom, there. Okay, now I've got my construction point here. I will come in again. I will come in again get my circle make sure that it is not a construction circle and i will come here and i will go click and then drag and then what do i want this i want this to be the uh this was pin pin radius like that that looks good enter and now i'm going to do my center point rectangle hover over the uh, construction point click drag and then this was what base side and now i'm going to tab over to the other one 
base side. Boom. Okay, now I've got that. I can finish my sketch. Let me show you one thing. As these dimensions come in now, it still puts the dimensions on there, but do you see what I have? This, instead of just saying 75, says FX, which means that is a parameter. So it's a parameter 75. That means it's not editable here. To edit it, I've got to go back to the table. So when you see the FX, that's just telling you that it is a parameter. So I'm going to finish the sketch. I'm going to come here like this. I'll go ahead and turn my first body back on where you can see it. Now, just real simply, I'm going to select this. I'm going to extrude it and I am going to extrude it by how much. I am going to extrude it by base height like that. Boom. Okay. Now look at that. All right. So now we have designed this using parametric design principles. Okay. So let's look at something that that would allow us to do. So let's say that I wanted to change the dimension of the pen. I could come back here to sketch one. I could uh, it, and I don't even have to, I'm sorry, I don't even have to go to the sketch. What I would do is I would just come to modify and I would modify my parameter table and I would come here and I would see that the pin R, let me make sure you can see that. Okay. Do you see the pin R there on this table? I would come over and instead of 25, I would make it 35 and then boom, what is the magic? The magic is the design did not break. The design did not break. When I changed the dimension of the pin, voila, it changed the dimension of the hole. Okay, isn't that neat? I could come over here and I could also say that the base side, let's say that instead of 50, let's say that I made that 40 like that. Okay, and then enter and then boom, look at that. You see the model is staying workable. The model is staying workable. Okay, so that is an introduction to, to parametric design principles. It was not an introduction to excellent parametric design principles. Why? Because let me show you. Let me show you. And this is what I would always do with students in the classroom when they use parametric designs. I would look at their strategy and I would see, is there a way that I could break it? And what could I do to break this model? What I could do to break this model is what if I came up here and I made the base height, instead of that base height being 25, what if I made it 40? Okay, boom. What did I just do? I broke the model. How did I break the model? Because when I brought this up, this one now would not, I mean, this is way too tall compared to this. So if I was going to change this dimension, this one, needed to go up also by that same amount so I couldn't break the model. Okay, so rather than completely starting from scratch, let's see if I can go in and change the way I'm doing parameters. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my table. And so I'm going to go back to my table. And what do I see the problem was? The problem was that this pin height, this pin height, you don't want that to be a number. What did you really want that to be? The pin height and uh, yeah, what you really wanted that to be, and I probably have to add another parameter and that needs to be, I'm going to call this uh, Pin. Now let me let me just try it here. Okay, so so this uh, this pin height really what you want the pin height to be is you want it to be the base height base h. So I'm putting this parameter what depends on another parameter. 
this parameter depends on another parameter. So what I'm doing is I'm creating right relationships between related components. So the pin height, okay, this pin height should be the base height plus uh, <clears throat> the 25, like that. Okay, now when I do that, look what happens. It no longer breaks. Okay, hmm, actually, it did break because still this isn't necessarily guaranteed to be that. So this is actually a good exercise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and say change parameters. What should that always be? It should always be two times the base height. All right. So now whatever I make the base height, the pin is going to be twice that, and since this is the same as this, it's always going to work. So let's go in and let's see if we can break this now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say change parameters, and then what I will do is I will come in, and on this uh, on this pin radius, what I'll do is just let's say if I make this if I make this uh, 40, or no, I don't want to make it 40. Let's say I make it 20, like that. Okay, nothing broke. And now what if I make the base height, what if I make that 15, the base height is 15, and look at that, it didn't break. And then what if I make the base side, what if I make that 30? Okay, you see I'm changing parameters, but nothing is breaking. I'm changing parameters, but nothing is breaking. And so that is the way you want to do parametric design, you want to define right relationships with related components. Now you can actually even go further than that. And let's say that if I came in and I made my base side, let's say, say that I made my base side. Let's say I made my base side uh, 60. Let's say I made my base side 60. Okay, that looks good. What if I made my base side 120? Okay, now what happens? I broke it because the distance offset is not far enough. So how would I do that? I would use my, I would make my offset, I would make my offset what? Two times base side, and then let's just say plus, uh, let's say plus 20, like that, so that they're not right against each other, but they're always going to be, and that was too far. So let me, let me change that again. Uh, so we're going to come here to modify, change parameter, and instead of two, mm, it should just be base side because it's in the middle. So let's say it is just I shouldn't have multiplied by two because really it's from the center point. So half the base plus half the base would just be the base. And then let's say that we add 10 to that. Okay, that looks really good. Okay, do you see that? And now as I change things, they're always going to be magically the right distance apart. Now, what do you actually see, you actually see that you can go further than that because you wouldn't want like a great big huge base and a little a little small pin. So you could even define more relationships between the components. And let me show you that I think that I would always want this pin to be half what the base is. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to change my parameters. And then what I'm going to say is the pin radius, rather than just being a random number, it is going to be the base side divided by 2. Okay. And then when I do that, look at that. All right. And now I could make this a completely different dimension, change parameter, and I could make uh, the, base, uh, the base side, I could make it 20. Okay. And then I could make the base height 50. And look at that. You see, the model isn't breaking as I change my parameters because why? I have defined 
right relationships between related components. And this, if you can just see this, even though this is a very simple thing, if you will design using this principle, your models will be very easy to edit. And the biggest mistake I see students make in trying to use parametric design principles, the biggest mistake that I see them make is to just go in and make a whole bunch of dimensions and then uh, you know a whole bunch of parameters and put dimensions on them and not seeing the relationship between them. Like I'll give you another example real quick here. Let's do another one, okay? And uh, so let me create a new sketch. Let me create, let me just kill this thing. Let me kill this thing. Don't save. All right. And so now we're going to create a new sketch. Okay. Create it here. And now uh, I'm going to get this over here where you can see it. And what I want you to see is I'm just going to create two circles. I'm going to create a circle that's 25. Okay. And then I'm going to create a circle that is 35. Okay. This is not using parametric design. Now, if you thought about parametric design, what are your parameters going to be? Well, you might think about designing an outside diameter. That would be, you know, how big the outer circle is. Then you might think about defining an inside diameter, and that would be the dimension of the inside diameter. And then you might think about having like a cylinder thickness. That would be the dimension here, the wall thickness. So you might have an outside diameter, an inside diameter, and a wall thickness. What would be wrong with that? If you did that, you would be over constraining your design because you can't independently say the outside diameter, the inside diameter, and the wall thickness, because if you did that, you don't, you're not recognizing that once you define two, the third is already defined. And that's why, I don't know if I can do this. Let me see if I can try to put a dimension. Like if I tried to put a dimension from here to here, okay, if I tried to set that, Okay, I put enter. I get the error you've over constrained. Why? Because if the outside is 35 and the inside is 25, then that wall thickness is going to be 5. You can't independently set that. And what, that's why I'm getting the error, the error that that is over constrained. And so what you've got to make sure that when you're doing these things is you don't go in and just start putting a dimension on everything. You have to use the minimum number of parameters that you can and relate, figure out what it, are your driving parameters versus your driven parameter. Okay. And so like in the earlier design, the driving parameter is let's say the radius of the bot the radius of the base that's the driving parameter the driven parameter was the radius of the pin which was half the uh, size <clears throat> size of the base so you see the radius becomes the driven parameter the base width becomes the driving parameter and so you got to think about what your design really is and what you want it to do. Okay, so this has been kind of a fun lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I am going to give you a homework assignment. I hope I can give you a homework assignment. So let's go back to this glasses case. Let me see if I can call this up. This was your assignment from one of the earlier homeworks. Let's see if I can get that thing to open up. If you remember when we did this, we did this how just going in like a bunch of cowboys typing in a bunch of numbers and so what your homework assignment is for next week is to go back to our glasses case example and to redesign it using parametric design principle but not just parametric design principle excellent parametric design principles where you are correctly defining the right relationship between related parameters.
So that will be your homework assignment for next week. And what I would appreciate if you guys would post your homework to YouTube, show that you have your parameter table set up, go in and start putting in crazy numbers in there for your parameters and showing that your model indeed does not break when you do that. Okay, guys, man, I hope you are having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. <clears throat> And I'm really hoping that you understand what I'm getting at about parametric design principles and methods. Leave a comment down below. Let me know that you understand it. Tell me what you're seeing in this. Tell me what you see the power of it is. And really, if you look at it, it's not that hard. It's not that many extra steps. Also, it makes your model so editable if you come in much later if you come in much later and open up a design and want to change it or edit it if you set that parametric table upright it's very easy to edit and very easy to make changes much later okay guys man i hope you're having fun i'm loving making these if you enjoy this lesson be sure to give it a thumbs up also, if you've not already, subscribe to the channel and then share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.